one character we knew we were going to have in the pilot was the plane. We knew it would have to be real and practical. I don't think we could have come up with something better than what we came up with in that first week, which was go find a plane, buy the plane, ship it to where we were shooting it. We knew we had so little time because we started late and we only had a small amount of time to get anything ready. And to actually build a plane set like that would have taken quite a while because there's a lot of plane details. So buying a plane seemed much more sensible. So it was <laughs> the most practical thing, but it was like the only thing given the time frame that we had. I had no script. We knew we wanted a plane crash. I was thinking in terms of, well, maybe a 727, maybe something even smaller. And then we started talking. It was like, no, JJ wants a wide body. It's coming from Australia. A couple of days later, I bought an L-1011. This is one of the few places in the world where they store old airplanes. Well, this is a Lockheed L-1011 that's been retired, uh, a very fine passenger airplane that became obsolete, of course. Carried about 250 passengers. We're going to take it apart and ship it over to Hawaii, and Jeff here is going to reassemble it. It's a pretty aggressive project for the time, uh, time we've got. I'm having them do what they can before it gets dark, which is a, chop the tail off, because we're not going to take the tail with us, we know that, and it can be a sheer cut. And to B, start working on the wings, because we know we want to take both wings with us, and we need to take one engine cowling with us that is intact. While we're in the process of starting to cut it up, I'm on the phone with the shipper constantly, because the first inclination is put it on a barge in as big pieces as possible and bring it over. The barge was going to take too long. That limited us to freighters. Today is February 21. It needs to be on the boat by March 4th to be in Hawaii by March 10 to be filmed by March 20. at it, we cut it sort of in quarters, uneven quarters, like if you look at the donut. Those quarters then got loaded onto flat racks. In the meantime, all the seats, all the soft goods, the bars, all the interiors are coming out, going into containers as fast as we possibly can. It came over on three separate boats because no boat had enough space. My shipper actually talked Matson into pulling a boat out of dry dock in Oakland for the last pieces. The very last pieces as they were getting craned onto the trucks, the boat was coming out of dry dock. I had exactly 24 hours to have all of this make it to Oakland, get on the boat, or I wasn't going to make my dates. <laughs> ABC needed to commit to the acquisition of the plane and the prepping and shipment of it before we could lock down the location. And it wasn't until 4 o'clock the day before the plane arrived that we actually got approval. Once it got to Hawaii, we had to get it all to the opposite side of the island because, of course, it comes into Pearl Harbor. I think she was horrified when she saw stuff coming out of the containers in Hawaii because she was waiting in Hawaii for it and it must have looked quite scary when you saw what they actually had to do. But we had two incredible construction coordinators, one for each site. We then had to separate it all as to the cockpit section which went southeast to Heiakea, which is where the cockpit was in the jungle, and the balance of it which went to the northwestmost point on the island, which is where the fuselage was at Mokalea. One of the challenges that were put to us was to not only find a beach location, but one that had incredible mountains in the background and that you could easily transport an L-1011 and get it down onto the beach. I was probably one of the first people out there when they loaded the pieces off the trucks and onto the beach and along the roadway. And because they were going through the process of putting it back together, it was strewn for probably a quarter of a mile, pieces everywhere, and it looked like a 
NTSB post-crash site and it was very disturbing. So it became very clear that they were going to have to put signage up that indicated that this was a movie prop. I'm never flying oceanic again. It doesn't get um, more absurd than this. We brought it out here on dozens of more trucks and then reintegrated it right here, as you see, on the beach at Motulaia. It's been a pretty wild ride. That's about 45,000 pounds of airplanes sitting there right now, just as we sit. Uh, and we have other elements, like the gear here, for example. You know, uh, That's probably another, I think this thing's about 8,000 pounds. And then, of course, we're here on essentially wild beach on the North Shore, so you have issues like winter storms. This is like doing a $100 million feature in eight weeks, and it's, it's a pilot. The plane on the beach had the added problem that JJ insisted that the wing not be CGI. So it's a 76-foot wing that had to be held up by a crane, and that meant that the fuselage had to be reinforced inside. Knowing that we had this plane that wanted to roll with the weight, the question became, how did we secure it? Now, we're on a beach in Hawaii that is sacred land, owned by the state. We could not dig down. So what we ended up doing was stacking an incredible number of trench plates on top of themselves. You know, the big steel things that you drive over in the street. They were standing next to the, the hinge of the wing, which um, the wing is 75 feet long, and this is just a, basically a giant steel hinge built out of four by 10 by quarter wall tubing. But the wing has also been put back together. It came in four or five pieces and it's got box tubing running all down the, the whole length of the, of the wing. It's like one giant piece right now, and it weighs probably 25,000 pounds. And we pick it up with a crane. As, as we pick it up, the hinge is on the hinge here. We get it up to the uh, set height. When the wing falls, we just drop her. And then painted out was the 110-ton crane that was holding up the wing. The first time you see the fuselage that's just been torn apart is so impressive. It's insane how real it is. I think the most realistic thing is looking around at the set dressing of just through all the debris of the airplane, like a toothbrush or like a child's teddy bear, just reality just really soaks in of how crazy something like this would be. Oh, 